Good morning, everybody. Today's daf is Benachos daf Yutes. We're going to pick up three lines from the bottom on Yutches on the Beis. And we left off yesterday with a machlokas between the Rabbanan and Rabbi Shimon in a case of Yitzika, the pouring of the oil on the on the cover mencha. Uh, the Rabbanan hold that Yitzika can be done by anybody, including a non Kohen, and Rabbi Shimon said that Yitzika has to be done by a Kohen. It's one of the uh, it's one of the avodos that needs to be performed by a Kohen. So Gemara asks, my time in the Rabbanan. So what is the reason for the Rabbanan who allow even a Zar, even a non Kohen, to do the Yitzika? Amar Kra, Yatzak Aleha Shemen, Vinasan Aleha Levona. As the Pasuk tells us that you pour the water out, you pour the oil on it, and you, you put on the Lavona, and then bring it in front of Bnei Aaron HaKohen, and then they do the Kamitza. So we see from the order of the Pasuk that the Kohen comes into the picture at the Kamitza, and only the, so only from the Kamitza onward is where you need a Kohen to be doing the Avodah. But it teaches us that those those parts of the Karbam Mencha that happened, that took place before the Kmitza are kosher with the Tsar, namely the Yitzika, the pouring of the oil, and the Vlil, the mixing of the uh, flour and the oil together. So that is so that's how the Rabbanan learned the Pasuk, Rabbi Shimon. And how does Rabbi Shimon um, learn his opinion that Yitzika actually needs a Kohen even prior to the Kmitza? B'nei Aaron HaKohanim so the Pasuk says, right, as we read before, it says B'nei Aron HaKohen, right in the middle of the, in the middle of the Avoda. Top of Amir Aleph. Mikra Nidra Shlafanav Ulachrav. You take the <laughs> phrase of B'nei Aron HaKohanim, and it is applied both to what is after it in the Pasuk, namely the Kmitza, and what is before it in the Pasuk, which is the Yitzika and the Blila. So we see with the learning of the Pasuk, even though it, it, it says you, you bring your Mencha, you do the Yitzika and the Blila, and then the Kohen tongue comes to the picture, the way that um, Rabbi Shimon learns the Pasuk is that that phrase of B'nai Arun HaKohen can be applied to both the actions that happen before and after that phrase in the Pasuk itself. So the Gemara asks, the Sav Rabbi Shimon Mikro Nidra Shlafan Avula Achra, and does Rabbi Shimon really subscribe to this concept that the way we learn with Darshan the Psukim that you can take a phrase in the middle and apply it to the actions that happen both before it and after it in the pasuk? But we see in, we see in a different brisa uh, that he uh, that he does not apply this method of limud. Benasan al karnasam is best. The pasuk says, Kohen takes takes the blood, receives the blood, the etzba and his etzba, and then he benasan al karnasam is and then he puts it on, and then he puts it on the mizbech. So the etzba o the lakach. The pasuk there tells us the it links the etzba, which refers to the right to the right hand, and the lakach, and um, and he takes the, he receives the blood. So there we learn that you can only receive the blood. The coin can only receive the blood using his right hand. And also we connect etzba and vinasan, which happens later on in the pasuk. So we see that the coin can only do the nesinas of the sinas adam zrika with his right hand as well, or the right or the right finger. So we see this word according to the Tanakama, the word etzba. Is Darsha is uh, modifying both what, the action that comes before it and after it in the Pasuk. Um, Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon comes along and says, Does it actually say Yad or Etzba by Kabbalah, which happened earlier in the Pasuk? Right, the Pasuk started with um, So Rabbi Shimon says, No, because the Pasuk does not say. Pasuk does not say the word etzba by by the mitzvah of Kabbalah by Velakach. Therefore, you can the Kohen can receive the blood even with his left hand. Vam Rabbi and Abai explains this machlokas as we as we would have guessed. But Mikra Nidrash Lefad of Velakach Kmiflagi that it must be a case that they're arguing on how to uh, darshan the pesukim. 
And the Tanakhama says, Mikra Nidr Sulafana Velachra, that you can learn, you can you, you take the phrase and you learn and you learn it into what is before and after the Pasuk. Well, Rabbi Shimon limits the phrase to only what comes after it in the in in the order of the Pasuk. So uh, some of the Farsham asked the question, how come we are particularly using this Brisa as a question on Rabbi Shimon's opinion? That in this in, in our case we said Rabbi Shimon held uh, and in this case, he is not. He's seemingly not holding that way. Why don't we? Why isn't this a question of both shitas? Because the Rabbanan shita is also switching in this case. Rabbanan earlier learned our pasuk and said that Yitzika is limited. Sorry, the Bnei Aron Hakohen is limited to what happens at, to what comes after it in the pasuk, and therefore Yitzika is kosher bazaar. But in this pasuk, the in, in this pasuk, the uh, Tanakam of the Rabbanan are learning. That and they're applying they're applying the phrase etzba to both what comes earlier and what comes later in the pasuk. So a lot of mafarshim explain. Looking at our at our pasuk that we have, it's a very it's a very difficult limud to say because it's really it's telling a succession of a story. I mean, if you look at the pasuk, the pasuk says you 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 come you want to bring a carpa mencha, and you put oil on it. And then the next pasuk is vehivial bnei aron And then you bring it in front of bnei aron akohen ben bekamatz. So the pasuk is is fairly clear that the kohen is only stepping into the picture at that point. So rabbanon who usually would learn mikronidrus to fun of lachra, they only learn it when it's could make sense or or it can be seen within the pasuk. When this pasuk is clearly teaching us a succession, they're not going to apply that concept. But according to Rabbi Shimon, who even in this case where the psukim don't really don't really allow for it or, or are fairly clear that it shouldn't that the um, kohanim are not re, are not involved in the process earlier on, even in this case, Rabbi Shimon is going to apply the concept of mikra nidr shlafan of So certainly in this next pasuk we brought, where uh, it's almost the implication is that it, that it is modifying both before and afterwards. So certainly Rabbi Shimon should. Carry through his opinion here, so that's why the that's why the the Gemara focuses only on asking Rabbi Shimon because if he's going to learn it in a pasuk, he's going to learn this concept in a pasuk where it really is tough to apply. Then certainly in an easier pasuk like this one, it should apply as well. So anyway, we're left with the question of question of Rabbi Shimon is how does he learn Yitzika? Because it seems here that he does, that Rabbi Shimon does not subscribe to the concept of Mikra Nedir Shlafan of Lachra. So Ella. Hainu time and Rabbi Shimon. So we're about eight lines down. So rather, this is the this is the reason why Rabbi Shimon uh, says that Yitzika must be done with a coin. The pasuk says vehevia. So in the same same pasuk we had it has the had it's the word vehevia with a vav vav mosev alin and rishon. So the vav connects the pasuk the front and the back, and therefore that's why Rabbi Shimon says the coin in the middle of the pasuk is connected to the front of the pasuk, which is the Yitzika, because of the vav. So Elamayata, the Gemara asks, Elamayata diksiv v'shachat as ben abakar v'krivu bnei aron akoyin as adam. So what about pasuk of general korbanos that you shech the carbon and then the bnei aron akoyin bring it on the mizbeach? Is there kues adam and they sprinkle the blood? So mikabel ve'elach mitzvas kahuna. So we learn we we darshan that the kohanim only step into the picture by the kabbalah of the dam. Uh, so we learn that shchita, which happens earlier in the pasuk, is okay even with a non kohen. So either Rabbi Shimon, but if you hold like Rabbi Shimon, vav mosvel yin rishon. Then in this pasuk we have v'shachad as ben apakar v'hikrivu bnei aron. So why we have the we have the vav mosif that should connect the bnei aron to what's earlier in the pasuk, the shchita. Right. So shchita hachanami bazar te psula. So why doesn't Rabbi Shimon subscribe to the position that? Shrita is must be done by a Kohen. Why is Shrita why why does in this passage does Rabbi Shimon not learn that the Vav connects it and the Kohen has to be the one to do the Shrita? So Gamar answers, no Shani Hasam, the Amar Kra, Visamach Vishachat. So in this case there is a, a connection, there's um Sukkim are next to each other the uh, on the Shrita and the Smicha. Therefore, Masmicha Bazar, Mashkita Bazar. So we connect the two halachos, and just like the smicha, the, the leaning on the animal is not done by coin, it's actually it's done by the owner of the it's owner of the animal. So therefore, so too, the shita we learn is not necessarily needed to be done by a kohen either. 
So the asks, so, so ima smicha bevailem, av shchita bevailem. So if once we're connecting smicha and shchita, why don't we go even further and say just like the smicha uh, has to be done with the owners of the animal, so too the shchita actually has to be done by the owner. So we learned before that's an ankoin, but why don't we learn that it specifically must be done by a by the by the owner? So the Gemara answers, hahu lo matzis amras kavachomer. We can't say this kavachomer. Sorry, hello, Matzah Samaris. Kavachomer, we can't say this Limud because of a Kavachomer. Umazrika, di ikar kapara lo bayabaylem. Just like we have the later on in the process, the sprinkling of the blood, which is the ikar kapara. That is where the, the Bailem actually get their kapara from after the Zrika is done. And even the, and in that case, the owners are not the ones to do it. The Kohen has to do the Zrika. So Shrita. So certainly shchita, which happens earlier in the in the process, that is not what affects the kapara. Certainly, certainly that should not be required to be done by the by the bialim. So the chitema, the gemara, you know, understands a, a potential question. The chitema ain't done in efshar mishi efshar. Maybe you'll say the reason with this there is no kavachomer here is because we can't connect. We can't make a kavachomer from something that's possible. Which is the shechita, a shechita, the shechting of the animal is possible to be done by a non kohen. Mishiach shar, something that's, that's impossible to be done by the owners, because the zrika is one of the avodos of the kohanim. So the kohanim have to do it. So if the if the owner happen, it doesn't happen to be a kohen, how can we say that the owner could do the zrika? So it could be you can't make the so the gemara saying you can't make the kavachomer of zrika to shchita because the zrika is impossible to apply it that it has to be done by the bylaw because many many owners that are bringing their karvanos are not kohanim so so rather we learn out we learn out the shchita by zar from from yom kippur by yom kippur it says v'shachat es parachatas asher lo that the kohen gadol has to go ahead and shecht his has to go and shecht his his par so we see there that because by Yom Kippurim, the Pasuk specifies that the Kohen Gadol has to bring his own bull offering and he has to shecht it himself. He has to shecht it himself. So we learn there that only by Yom Kippur is it a special halacha that the owner himself has to do the namely the Kohen Gadol. But generally, the owner of the Karban is not the one who is required to do the shechita. Okay. So, now the Gomorrah turns to a position of Rav and understanding uh, certainly mudim in the Pasuk, and it's brought down because part of one, one of the cases we'll talk about is the case of Menachos. So, Amarav. Kol makam shenem Torah v'chuka eno ela le'akev. So anytime that in the Pasuk he uses the Lashon of Torah and the Lashon of Chuka, that teaches us that whatever is prescribed in that Pasuk is me'akev in the process that you are doing. And, and, and if it's missing, that whatever you're trying to accomplish is... Uh, it will be invalid. So Kasak Daita Tarti Baya. So I we assume originally that what is Rav saying? That you need both the word Torah and the word Chuka. Kidiksiv, just like why just like we have by Paraduma, Zos Chuka Satora. Right? We have the word chok and we have the word Torah. And we know that the the all the processes of the Paraduma are essential. And if any of them are any of them are, are missing, that the Paraduma would be invalid. So Gemara comes and asks, okay, so we assume that we need both Chok and Torah. Ah, Vahari Nazir. What about the case of Nazir? Delok Siva Be Elo Torah. Vahamarav Tunufa Be Nazir Makva. So what about in the case of a Nazir? Uh, Nazir says, Zos Toras Ha Nazir. It only has the word Torah, not the word Chuka. And yet we learn that the waving in the Nazir process, in the Nazir process is uh, Ma'akev. But it doesn't say, but we just said, or Rav just said, that you have to have Torah and Chukah. This one just has Torah. So, my answer is no. Shani Hasam came the Ksiv Kain Yase. Since in that Pasuk, the Pasuk says, Zos Torah Hanazir Asher Yidor Karban Al Hashem Al Nizro, Vad Asher Tziv Hashem Lemor. No, sorry, skip skipped the line. Asher Tasi Yado Kivi Nizro, Asher Yidor Kain Yase Al Torah Nizro. So again, at the Torah at the end of the Pasuk, it has the phrase Kain Yase. So, so he should do. Another limiting phrase. Therefore, Kenya, the Kevin, the Ksiv, Kenyase, command the Ksiva behu Chukadami. So the Gemara says no, because it has the phrase Kenyase, that is equivalent to having the phrase of Chukah. So in essence, in essence, uh, Nazir also has 
is similar has Torah and Chukah, or instead of Chukah, it has Kenyasa, but that teaches us that the uh, Tunufa is Ma'akit. Okay, so Gemara asks again. Hare Toda, what about Karban Toda? Deloxiv Beho Ela Torah. What about the Karban Toda, which only says Torah, which says. There is it. Um, Achalos lechem chabetz yakriv yakriv karbano al zevach toras shlamav. Right, we see the word Torah, but not the word chuka. Utanan, and we learn by karban toda. Uh, arba arba arbam sheba toda ma'akvin zeze. Right, we know that all the parts of the karban toda, the forty loaves, the 30, 30 loaves of thirty loaves that are matzah and ten loaves that are chametz, and they all are ma'akiv zeze in the process. So comes to the Gemara and says, "Shani Toda, the Iskish le Nazir." Now the Torah is the Toda, so the carbon Toda is linked to Nazir. Dixiv al Zevach Toda Shlamav, but Amar Mar Shlamav the Rabbis Shalmei Nazir. So since we have a link of Toda to Nazir, we ta- we learn that just like by Nazir, all the parts of the process are Ma'akev. So to by Toda, all the pro- or the parts are Ma'akev. Okay, another question. Vahare Mitzora. What about case of Mitzora again? De Loksiv Be Ella Torah. That's in Nazir. It only tells us the word to- Torah and not the word Chukot, right? Zos Tia Toras Hametzora. Utnan. No, sorry, hold on. Yeah, Deluxe Tiva Torah. Utnan Arba Minin Shem Mitzora Makmin Zetz. The four parts of the Nazir's. I'm oh, sorry, of the Mitzorah's carbon that he brings are Ma'akev Ze'eses. But again, it only says the word Torah, not the word Chukah. Shani Hasim Kev Diksiv Zostihia Torah Ze'eses. Kamal Diksiv Be'chukah Dami. It's the same answer that we gave earlier. Before it was Yihia, this is Tihia. But again, because it says Tihia, it shall be. That is equivalent to using the word of Chok. So it really is as if we have Torah and Chukah here as well. And that's why the four parts of the carbon are Ma'akev. Okay, Gemara asks uh, from a different source. Vahari Yom Kippurim. What about Yom Kipper, where it says Deluxiv be Ella Chuka, it only says the word Chok and not the word Torah. Utnan Shnei Siri Yom Kippur Ma'akvin Zeesa, and we have, and we know that the two uh, goats of Yom Kippur are Ma'akiv. You need you need to have both of them, otherwise the carbon is no good. So Gemara adds, Gemara answers. Switch, the Gemara actually at this point changed changes up the answer. So we're no, we're no longer we're no longer saying that Rav means it had you need to have the word Torah and the word Chukah. Rather, Ela O Torah O Chukah. Rather, either the word Torah or the word Chukah, either one of them will imply that the processes described in the pasuk are ma'akim. So the Gemara asks the Torah. Sorry, the Gemara asks. Um, Bahare Shar Karbanos Dixibu Torah V'Lamakim. What about what about all the Karbanos? Now we have generally the Pasuk Rashi tells us is what Zos HaTorah la, Zos HaTorah LaOla Ula Mincha right you, we see the word Torah is by all the Karbanos and we know for already from in the beginning of Menachos that there's many parts of the process that are not Ma'akev right even our Mishnah there's a lot of parts that are, that are not Ma'akev so it can't be that Torah alone is enough to show us that the process is Ma'akev so rather the Gemara understands Rav is saying Torah by a Chuka if just the word Torah alone is not enough. It needs the word Chukah. The Chukah lo bay Torah. But if it has the word Chok, then that is enough to show that the process is uh, Li'ikuva, and you don't also need Torah. The Gemara asks, V'ha Torah v'chukah ka'amar. But if we look at the, we look at what Rav said, it seemed to imply that Torah and Chukah were on equal footing. That Torah and Chukah were, were both words that teach us uh, that a process is ma'akev. But this last answer is really telling us it seems that chuk is really the only word that is needed. So Achikamar, this is how we have to understand the lashon of Rav. Af al gav diksiv Torah, even though it says the word Torah, iksiv chuka in ilolo. Then if it says chuk with it, then it is ma'akev. If it doesn't, then it is not. Okay, so then we come with come with a question. Vahari mincha, what about the case of a karpa mincha? Diksiv be chuka. The Karb Mincha does say the word Chok, and we just said in the last understanding of Rav that Chok by itself is enough to teach us that you are that a process is Ma'akev. V'am Rav, and Rav says, Kol makum shehichsir ha'kasa b'torah, b'torah's Mincha e'no el al-akev. Rav brings a concept down that when the parshios of the Karb Mincha are repeated in Parshas Tzav, they're first said in Parshas Vayikra, and then repeated again in Parshas Tzav, and Rav says, 
any part of the process that is repeated in Parsha Tzav that teaches us that that part of the process is Ma'akev. Anything that's not repeated is not, is not Ma'akev in the process of, of Menachos. So, Mincha, sorry, Hechzir in, Lo Hechzir Lo. So this implies, this learning of Rav now implies that by Karma Mincha, where we said it has the word Chok, but it has the, it has the word Chok, but Rav's Limud is only those parts of the process that are repeated in the Torah are actually, are actually the Kuva. But why doesn't Rav just say um, that everything in the, everything in the carbon of, of, of everything in the carbon Mincha is Ma'akev because it says the word Chok? So Gemara answers, Shani Hasam, Dixi Siva Choka, Aachila Siva. No, so by Mincha it is different because where does it say the word Chok? It's only about the eating of the carbon Mincha, not of the bringing of the entire carbon Mincha. Um, is the pasuk? Um, I'm not, not finding the pasuk readily, but the pasuk is written. The so uh, the pasuk is written though by the achila of the carbon mencha, and therefore we learn that you can't apply the same concept that that the whole process is liikuva because the specifically chok is written is written by uh, the eating of the carbon mencha. Okay, so Gemara asks on that concept. Vahari lechem upon him. What about the case of lechem upon him? Dikri kziva chuka achilak siva. Again, by the lechem upon him, it has the word chok, but it's written by the eating of the lechem upon him. Utnan, and we learn. Shnei sedarim, ma'akven zezeh, the two sets of, of loaves. Uh, the lechem upon him are ma'akven zezeh. Shnei bazichin, ma'akven zezeh, the two bazichin, the two spoon we have uh, you know, across, across ikuva by the sedarim and the bazichin. But we see here, that the word chok is written by the eating of the bread, and yet we learn that the process, all the different processes of the lechem upon him, not just the eating of the lechem upon him, are ma'akim. Now that we go back, rather, we have a different way of, of understanding. Sorry, Ella, sorry, that, we're still the question. We see here that even though it lechem upon him, it is the the chok is written. The word chok is written by the eating of it. It still is applying to the entire process of lechem upon him. So shani awesome. So we go back and we and we and we re understand the word chok by the carbon mencha. Shani hasam by mencha the amar kra mi gorsa u mi The mishnah the by by min, by menachos. Let's look at the last Rashi by menachos. It has a separate, as another limud. Kabe mincha, lachi lo havichuka dida ikuva. The reason why the word chok by a mincha is not is not teach us that the whole process is ma'akev. Why mishum tiksiv mi gorsa u mishamna? The pasuk teaches us that as they come from its flour and its oil. Right, mi the matzi lemechtav. It could have just said from flour, from oil. But it's still, instead, the positive tells us from its flour and its oil. You learn that you have to have the full measure of flour and the full measure of oil. And the fact that the Torah by Kar Mencha had to come along and say and have this limit in the Pasuk, Mi Gorsa, Mi Shamna. To teach us that you need the full measure of flour and the full measure of oil. We see here that it must be that the lashon of chok used by Karma Mincha is not teaching us that the entire process is ma'ake. Because if the word chok would have taught us the entire process is ma'ake, we would not have needed this extra limud of garsa um So the fact that we have to have these, that the Torah goes out of its way to say mi garsa um sheds light on the word chok. That is written in Karba Mincha, and therefore, Chok in Karba Mincha is, I guess, an, ex- an exception to the rule and would not teach us the Yikuva, and so therefore, we need to have separately Mudim to teach us what is Ma'ake by a Karba Mincha. Okay, Ahmed Beis, your Testament Beis. And the uh, Masorah Shas changes the gear, so we put the top line in brackets. So, second line, Gufa. We just brought down this concept of Rav. Amarav, Komakam Shehichsir Lacha Kasov. So Rav taught us the concept that by Karba Mincha, any time that the Torah goes out of its way to repeat parts of the process 
in Parshat Sav that it already taught us in Parshat Vayikra. That is coming to teach us that those parts of the process are likuva. They are ma'akev and they are essential. Shmuel Amr, but what does Shmuel, uh, how does Shmuel, what does Shmuel learn by Karb Mencha? Geras Ushem and Ma'akev and Vein Davar Achar Ma'akev. So Shmuel learns like this, this lima that we just had at the bottom of the Amud, that only Geras and Shem and only the measure of flour and the measure of oil are Ma'akev, and other parts of the Mincha process are not Ma'akev. So the Gemara asks, Do Shmuel, Afagav the Tana Bei Kra, Lo Ma'akvele? Does Shmuel really hold that if the Pasuk repeated parts of the process of the Mincha, the second time in the Torah that those parts of the process are not likuva. Does he not follow this concept that if you, that if it's repeated again, that it, it, the concept of rav that uh, if the if the parts of the mincha process are repeated, that those do not show that they're ma'akev? Ella the Gemara quickly backtracks and says no. Kohecha detana be kra vade Even Shmuel agrees that any part of the process that is repeated in the Torah is Le'ikuva. Bahacha, what are Rav and Shmuel arguing about? More specifically, They're arguing on how we understand this pasuk, these two psukim of Melo Kumtso and Kumtso. The psukim by the by Mencha have these two phraseologies, Melo Kumtso and Kumtso. The Tanya, what do we learn in the Brisa? Melo Kumtso Bekumtso, we have both these phrases. Shal Yase Mida Lekomets, that the Kohen is not allowed to make a measure, a specific like Kli that has a measuring of the Komets, and rather he has to measure it out with his hand. So Rav Savar, Hanami, Tana Bekra. So Rav holds that this concept of, of doing it with their hand, of the Kohen taking the, the Komets with his hand, is repeated is considered as being repeated in the Torah. Why? Because it says Dixiv Vayakrev Esha Mincha Vaimale Kapomimena. The Pasuk, and this is the Pasuk by Aaron Akon, Vayakrev is a mincha vayimale kapimena vayakter on his bech milvat ola saboker. So because this kant this Pasuk is repeated, talking about the kapo, that the it is actually Likuva that the coin has to take the Kmitsa with his hand itself. Itself. Shmuel and Shmuel says Doros Mishal Loyafin and Shmuel says no. When we talk, when we say the concept that if a process is repeated in the Torah, that is when it's repeated just in the just in the normal procedure of uh, Menachos. If it says a, if it says if something is repeated by Mincha, but it's but it's repeated in a very specific concept, meaning a concept that was a a, a one time concept like like this pasuk which is talking about. Aaron's inauguration of the Mishkan, where it's not Lidoros, it's a one time. So Shmuel says now, you, you can only learn the repeated parts of the process if they're similar to Geras and Shemen, which are just part of the process uh, going, going forward. But you can't take a, a process that was just uh, a, one time, a one time thing and learn that to teach us that it is a Ma'akeh, part of the process. And that's why Rav, te, so Rav takes the concept of Kovakum Shehichzir to the next level, where as long as it's repeated at all, whether it's Doros or Shah, that shows us that it's Ma'akev, and Shmuel limits it only when we have a repetition within the general processes. Does that teach us that it is Likuva? So we ask, Shmuel, Doros Mishal Loyafina, is it true that Shmuel does not take a, a particular, something that happens in a particular context and learn it out to Doros. Is that true? Sorry. Does Shmuel really not apply this concept of learning from a specific Haraz Shah for future generations? Well, it's not. We see in a different Brisa or in a Mishnah. We have a concept. We have different Kalim, those that are used for liquids and those that are used for solids. So a kli that is meant for liquids can be mekadesh liquids. And those um, measures, those uh, those kalim that are for dry for dry things can be mekadesh dry things. But we can't we can't cross over if we use a kli that is for a liquid for a solid or vice versa. A kli that's meant for a solid for a liquid, that kli does not have the power to be mekadesh what is put inside it. Amr Shmuel, and Shmuel says, Loshna Ela Midos. This concept that we can't cross lach with Yavesh, liquids with salads, only is when you're talking about a kli that is for 
measuring. It's actually a measuring plea. Aval, misericos. But what about the basins? The basins that would collect the blood, which again, there's no set amount of blood that has to be caught. You just have to accept all the blood. So it's just a, it's not a measuring plea. It's just a, just a basin to accept the blood. Mikachin, those, we see that, a, we see that the um, blood basins are mikadesh, which are, sorry, blood basins obviously are for blood, so they are for a liquid. And they are mikadesh, something that is dry, where we see from the Nisim. Because it says name Meleim Soles, passed by the Messiah, teaches us of Karbano Karas Kesef Achash Lashim Yamishkala Mizrak Echad Kesef. They took one of the silver basins, Shim Shakal Shakal Akodesh, name Meleim Soles, and they filled it out. Soles blew a Bashem and Lamin They went and they filled it out with a solace of flour. So we see they're taking a kli that is meant for liquids and using it for a solid, and it is affected, and it affects being Mikadesh, what is the flour that's put inside it. And so we see here that Shmuel is taking the parsha of the Nisim, which is obviously just a one-time thing, and applying it, and applying it that misericos or, or that any non-measuring vessel can be used liquid to solid and, and would be effective to be mikdash was put inside it. So our answer is shiny hasam the tana be tana bakra tracer seven. As we know from the parsha, the, that parsha is repeated twelve different times, and so. Because it's repeated twelve different times, then it is okay to take this concept that happened, that it was a one-time concept and apply it for future generations because of the repetition in the pasuk. But generally, Shmuel would not subscribe to this idea that you can learn Doro, uh, Doros to Shah. Sorry, uh, Shah to Doros. So Amalei Rav Kahana. Now that we quoted the beginning of that mission, we just continue to quote the end of it. Amalei or Amalei Rav Kahana, Rav Asi Rav, Bari Agasha. Tanabe Kra. I'm sorry, hold on. says to Ravas, sorry, no, sorry, no, before we get there, we are going to ask a question on now Rav's opinion. Rav's opinion, which is that any repetition in the Pasuk is will teach us that it is Ma'akit. Amr Le Rav Kahana Le Rav. Sorry, Amr Le Rav Kahana for Rav Asi Le Rav. Vari Hagasha, the Tanabe Kra of Lomakva. But we have this concept of Hagasha, of bringing of bringing the mincha to the mizbeach that is repeated in the pasuk, or is repeated in the Torah, and we know that we learn that it is not and that it is not ma'akev. So the Gemara wants to flesh this out. So man tanabe, how do we know that the that the hagasha is repeated because the second pasuk comes and teaches us zos Torah ha mincha hakrevesa bnei aharon lefnei hashem. This is the Torah of the Mincha. B'nei Aaron have to bring it l'fnei Hashem. So Hahu, this particular Pasuk is not just extra repetition in the process, but rather Hahu l'kavol makam hudasa. This Pasuk is coming along to specifically teach us the proper part on the Mizbeach where the Mincha needs to be brought. To Tanya, so we learned, l'fnei Hashem yachu b'marav. The Pasuk tells it has to be the second Pasuk of l'fnei Hashem that we would think it has to be in the West because... And Hecha was situated in, in in the west, the and the mizbeach. So the and so the to bring it to the part of the mizbeach. If you look at the picture in Rashi, or the article has a, has, a, has a different picture. The mizbeach was set up opposite the opening to the Hecha, and therefore, I would think lefnei Hashem. I would think it has to be brought anywhere on the western side of the mizbeach, which would be towards the opening. Uh, so the opening towards the Hecha. That's what that that's what I would think from Lefnei Hashem. Tamad Lomar El Panam is Beach. However, the other pasuk the other pasuk teaches us that is those Torahs of Mincha Hakrevus of Lefnei Hashem. El Panam. Sorry, the rest of that pasuk El Panam is Beach. It has to be to the face of the Mizbeach. What's the face of the Mizbeach? The face of the of the Mizbeach is the ramp that leads up to it. And if you look from the from either of the pictures, the ramp is in the south. So okay, so should I should I be bringing it in the in the west, or should I be bringing it to the south of the Mizbeach? Right, El Panam is Beach Yachal Bedarim. I would have thought that implies the south. Tam Alomer Lefnei Hashem. But what about the other part of the pasuk that says it needs to be brought Lefnei Hashem? Haketzat. So how do you accomplish both bringing it Lefnei Hashem and to the face of the Mizbeach? Magisha Bekeren Jeromis Ma'aravis. You bring it to the southern, the southwest corner of the Mizbeach. Keneged Chuda Shal Keren Vidayo. You go to the exact corner of the of the southwest of the Mizbeach. And that's sufficient, and that is how you accomplish both parts of the uh, both parts of the pasuk. So we see that this pasuk that that is brought down is needed. The lefnei Hashem is needed to teach us the exact spot where the carbon needs to be brought 
on the Mizbeach, and therefore it's not it's not um, repetitive to to be questioned on Rav. So now that we brought down this, now we brought down this uh, Brizo, we'll continue to, to we'll continue the end of it. Rabbi Lezer Omer, Rabbi Lezer learns in this pasuk. Yachal yagishena lema rava shel karen o droma shel karen. So I would have thought when we say the southwestern corner, it doesn't have to be precise. Maybe it could be, you know, towards the west side of it or towards the south side of it. It'll still be at the corner, but it could be, you know, all on, you know, on one side or on the other side. Why does it have to be the precise, the precise corner itself? So Amram, I have a concept. Kol makom shata mosi shteimikraos. Whenever we have two psukim. One of the psukim, if you follow it specifically, you can be makayim that pasuk and the other and the other competing pasuk. But if you follow the the second pasuk explicitly, you will you will adhere to that pasuk, but you will be mivatel the other pasuk. So what do we do in this case? We don't we 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 don't pay attention to the pasuk. That would only would only satisfy itself, but we mivatel the other competing pasuk. And we take instead we follow the the pasuk that allows us to accomplish both sukkim. So what does that mean? Omer Hashem b'marav. If you would say that lefnei Hashem, you actually follow fully lefnei Hashem that we go into that we do it on the west side of the mizbeach. Batalta el panei mizbeach then we will be mevatel the pasuk that tells us it has to be at the face of the mizbeach, which is in the south. So if we do it in the west, it would not be, it would not be mekayim the pasuk of panam mizbeach. Ugachata omer el panam mizbeach bedarom. However, if we follow the pasuk of panam mizbeach of the face of the mizbeach, which is in the south, ki yamtel of Hashem, then we would still we would still accomplish the other pasuk of Lefnei Hashem. So Gemara asked the obvious question, how, can, how would that be so? How would you be Mekayim, how would you be Mekayim Lefnei Hashem by doing it on the south side by the Mizbeach? Right? We, just, we just said before, based on our picture, that if you're just doing it on the south side, you're, you're not at the opening. You're, you're lower than the opening because we assume the Mizbeach is situated right in the middle um, and therefore the south side is below where the opening of the Hechel is. So Gemara answers, which we had which we have had previously. Now the Masechtos Amar Ravashi, Kasavar Haitana. This Tana actually holds Kulum Mizbeach Butzafim Kai. Not like we thought in our original picture, where the Mizbeach is situated right, right, precisely in the middle, and therefore, if you were on the south side of the Mizbeach, you would not be opposite the opening for the Hechal. But rather, it's like this picture. It's like this uh, other picture that if you have the guard scroll, where the entire part of the Mizbeach is actually in the north side. And therefore, the bottom, the 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 south, the south side of the mizbeach is situated exactly opposite the opening to the heichal. And therefore, if we if we follow the pasuk of putting it on the south side, we would be accomplishing both the southern both the southern um, both at the the face of the mizbeach on the southern side and at the opening of Pnei Hashem, at the opening to the heichal. All right, we will stop. Uh, we'll stop here for today. Yeah.